to introduce our demonstrating artist tonight. And her name is Shi Gua. And she was born in Shanghai, China, where she earned her Bachelor of Fine Arts in oil painting from Shanghai Normal University. She earned her Master of Fine Arts from Savannah College of Art and Design in Georgia, I believe, majoring in photography. It was after graduation that she found her preferred medium was watercolor. Her work has been exhibited in lots of countries across the globe, including France, Italy, Greece, Slovenia, China, Korea, Vietnam, Canada, and here in the United States. She has been featured in the International Artist Magazine, the Art of Watercolor Magazine, and Watercolor Artists Magazine. She's won numerous awards and honors. She seeks the beauty of the forms of life, delightful and ugly, booming and straggling, flourishing and dead. She investigates the impermanence of images, thoughts, realities, dreams, and nature in her art. Coming to you tonight from her home in Florida, let us welcome Shi Gua. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Today, I'm going to paint this um, um, berry, morning berries. And as you can see, it's uh, actually a part of my very big painting. So a lot of people are amazed of my details. <laughs> so that's why I, um, today I'm gonna um, paint a little bit details to show you how I do it. Um, so before I start the demo, see, I already mm, mm, did the drawing and also put the masking foot on it. So now I'm gonna start. I'm going to start with the very bright yeah, the yellow because it's the brightest color. Need to be very clean. Oops. So you've already so you've already put some masking fluid down. Yes. Is that what I see? Yes. Here, the shiny part. Okay. <laughs> And your uh, when you decided to paint this, did you have a reference photo that you were? Oh, I, I do. It? It's a part of my painting, actually. So, uh, do you want to see my reference photo? It's if you have it available. Painting. Yes, it's here. It's actually my part of my painting. So. Oh, okay. I see. <laughs> So that's a beautiful photo too. Um, of course, with your background in photography, um, that's certainly a good place to start. Oh yes, right. I always say that. If you want to be a very good realistic painter, you have to be a very good photographer. <laughs> so usually I use two brushes. One is a paint brush, one is a, a water brush. Ah. So you just you keep two brushes of the same size available so that you can usually use the water them. brush is a little bit bigger. Oh, okay. I'm just gonna finish all the yellow.
This one, I know I'm going to paint the in green. So, but for now, because I want to save time, so I'm not going to paint the green. I still use the same brush to finish the one color. <laughs> I did want to mention um, while we have a minute here that we are going to be having a meeting for new members on December 14th. So if if you've joined uh, recently, like in the last uh, year or two, um, we'd love to get together with you. This is going to be an in-person meeting, I think, and you should be getting more information about that in your email. But uh, mark it down on your calendar for December 14th at 7 p.m. Thanks. So it's even it's a it's a yellow, but I still don't want to use the same color. I don't want to repeat the yellow. So sometimes I change the, the value, sometimes I change the tone. So how many different yellows do you have in your- oh, I can show account? you. Uh, can you see? Oops. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed from your supply list that you like to uh, have lots of different colors available. To uh, yes. I think it's easier. Of course, you, you know, technically you can only, you can, you can use, use three colors, right? You can paint, but <laughs> it's just uh, right. not possible in reality. <laughs> So some of the variability that we see in your yellow there is because you've added water to it. Is that correct? Oh, uh, yes. Right. That's going to change the value, right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where I was seeing that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And can just finish. I hope I can finish this part first. And then if I cannot, then I have another one. I finished a part of it. Okay. So I'm going to just finish here first. See if okay. I have more time. This is my water brush. So now I'm going to change the color to red. Let's start with the, um, the bright colors first. I have so usually um, start so with many reds. And here some purple red <laughs> here. Cannot really see, it's very dark. Yes. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start with the so you usually like to start with yellow? Because yellow, you need to be very, it needs to be very clean, right? So I'm going to yes. start with yellow. But okay. <laughs> usually my painting is very dark. So this is, a, this one is kind of special. So you're well, going you from, from lights to darks generally, is that true? Yes. For the red, I use the same technique. It just uh, um, changed the color, not all the time, but very often. Even the reds, you can, you probably cannot really see, but I will change the color. So did you do like all the yellows first? Like it, that's all the yellow in the whole painting pretty much? Mm, 
if uh, I paint by myself, maybe probably not all of them to try to get as more as possible. But maybe if I, you know, <laughs> forget some one or two, but yeah, but for the demo, I try to get all of them. Okay. Yeah, save time. And Pat uh, would like to know um, from mm -hmm. the chat uh, what what you would call your style of painting. Oh. <laughs> don't know. Realistic. Okay. So you can see a little bit, I change from the cool tone to the warm tone. Oh, yes. And we did send out a list of the colors you like to use, um, but I don't have it in front of me. Um, do you know off the top of your head what the cool tone is and what the warm tone is there? Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. But just, you know, the warm one is this permanent, permanent uh, red. And sometimes I use even use some orange. Uh -huh. The the cool cool one is uh, almost like purple, pink, like permanent pink, rose, and uh, even purple. That's it. But for the dark, I use the sienna. Now I'm going to paint the dark one. So. Oh, the burnt sienna. Yes. So um, Candy would like to know, um, do you paint primarily in watercolor now? And um, why do, do you like watercolor better than your oil painting past? Okay, that's uh, the question I always ask. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think I, I like watercolor more now because then it's, um, it's fun. Just a lot of um, accidents. Right now, it's one. <laughs> so it's just every time you get different results. You can never paint. Um, you can never get the same results. Even you paint the you know same, same painting. So you it's like the unpredictability of it. Yeah, kind of. And also, also I think I, I really don't like this. Um, the smell of oil painting and it's that all kinds of stuff. <laughs> you have wow. to do all kinds of stuff, right? So I think it's, um, for me, it's a like, convenient. Uh, do you, do thing. you ever tape down the paper? What do you mean tape down the paper? Uh, tape it down so that it's stuck to the bottom. What it, uh, I still don't really understand what he's talking about. Oh, okay. Like, well, um, it looks like your paper is movable there. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes. I use the, use this, uh, uh, double side tape. Oh, okay. All right. Oh. It's then easy to see. Do you ever uh, paint plein air, or do you mostly um, do the studio? Mostly, uh, mostly studio, but I still, I'm pretty good at plein air though. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I paint a lot when I was in college. Okay. But right now, uh, no. <laughs> and do you give lessons? Uh, I do, I have some private students, that's it. And do you teach them over Zoom or in person? In person, in person. I'm thinking if probably I will teach in Zoom one day, someday. <laughs> that's why. That's why I need to practice Zoom. 
Now you really can see the color difference. Yeah, so you, I see you're warming it up with some yellow in the in your red there to make it kind of orange. Yeah, it's hard to see though, right? It's a little bit hard. <laughs> So if it's getting too dark, that's my strategy. I'm just gonna use the paper towel. Okay. So okay. Brighter. Okay. Do you have particular artists that have inspired you on your journey? <laughs> so I need to think about it. Some of photographers, a lot of them. Ah, okay. Yeah. Check what I'm gonna do. Okay, let's do some reds and finish. So did you take watercolor painting in college? Um, actually, one month. I think uh, that's it, one month. Oh, oh wow. But I, I think I feel like you don't have to have a, you know, if you're really good at drawing or, you know, painting with the other medium, uh -huh. then I think it's not necessary <laughs> to really take watercolor lessons. That makes sense. But I learned a lot from uh, other watercolor artists from uh, Facebook, all kinds of, you know, Instagram or online even by, by looking at their paintings. I learn so every would, day. <laughs> so would you say that the drawing skill is pretty important in what you do? I think it's very important. I think it's more important than painting itself. Okay. And do you draw freehand or do you um, use a different method of transferring the drawing from photo to your paper? I use drawing most of the time, but sometimes of course, if it's a, it's a demo, <laughs> I don't want to, to spend a lot of time, but I'm really good at drawing though. So. Okay. Super good. <laughs> So I, that's what I believe, you know, if you want to paint very good, you have to draw it. That makes, yeah, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Well, that's, that's why um, <laughs> I feel like some watercolor, especially watercolor artists, they don't really like drawing that much. You know, my students, they don't, they hate drawing. So it's all every time, ah, oh, drawing again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but th that's the most important thing for me. So with your students, you really emphasize drawing too. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. yes. I feel that's more important than painting itself. And what's the best way to learn to draw? <laughs> uh, I start with the uh, steel light and just okay. uh, put some steel light there and then start to draw. That's what uh, I, what I teach my students. So now I try to make this one loose. So I wet the paper. Ah. It's a little wet on wet there. Oh, here you go. Yes, <laughs> that's the term. And why are you making that one looser? Hmm. Yeah, we have some change, right? Variety, some things loose, some things tight. <laughs> that's a, okay. I, I just feel like a lot of, lot of painters, watercolor painters, not just watercolor painters, uh, even just other oil painters. But they always want to paint everything tight. It's like, you know, if you can paint it tight, it means you're very good. Not at all. 
Uh -huh. I just feel like it's harder to make it loose. But I think it's very necessary because you want the contrast, right? Sure. The color contrast and then it's the where you need to do it hard. I mean, this, right. Uh, and where you need to do it loose. That's really, you know, it's another kind of contrast. That's too much. So how many hours would you estimate that you invest to complete a painting? Not this one, but a, a typical painting. Every, oh, every painting? Yeah. Oh, maybe a month. Okay. <laughs> I'll probably paint like four or five hours a day and then usually um, yes, finish in months. Wow. Yeah, it's lots of time. <laughs> So I still, you can see I use two brushes. That's my typical technique. Oh yeah. So you've softened some of it so that it mm -hmm. changes yeah. and you've also changed the uh, value mm -hmm. from light to dark in the same twig. Just keep changing your color. You cannot use the same color forever. That's the key. Even, you know, when I see the picture, it's the same color anyway, but still I just figure out some colors to, to play with. Okay. So you are changing up the colors uh, because you like different to use, uh, to have variety in there regardless of whether they might look more the same, more mm -hmm. similar in the photo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Especially, I think it's in the dark, it's very important. I'm talking about the, in the shade, right? This mm -hmm. is the, usually the problem starts. Some, some artists just use the, of course not, you know, everyone knows, okay, no black, no black, right? Right. But if you use the same color, like same, whatever, gray, grayish, whatever dark color, if you use the same color, you will still get the same muddy results. So that's the time you really need to think about it, changing color. Change it up. So in, uh, when you are at a little stopping point, it'd be nice to see the reference photo again. Okay. <laughs> you, would you like to see now? Sure. Okay. Oops. Uh, yoga. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Start here. Oh. Ah. <laughs> I forgot which one I was doing. Okay. Anyway, this one. That dark one, I think you were on. Yeah. Dark one's already done. I think it's, when it gets too dark, usually that's my technique. It's just tapping. Oh, this this paper is a uh, hot press. Oh, hot if press. Just, yes. Do you <laughs> always, do you always, or do you usually use hot press or it, it depends? It depends. It depends on what kind of color, or what kind of paper I have. Now I have more hot press. But I feel the, the difference is I feel like on hot press, I can paint a little bit faster. That's what um, I feel. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Because it's smooth. So sure. it, it's, that makes know. sense. Yeah. But of course, uh, cold press has a little bit texture. So it's very, um, I think it's easier to paint the, the barks or you have something, you know, intricate. Um, texture when yes that's time to use coat press
and uh, is there a particular manufacturer for the paper that you like to go with? And this one is, uh, I think this one is Fabriano. Sometimes I use arches. Okay. Oh, and the color, uh, the, the paint is a mission. That's and what I like right now. <laughs> I am oh. not familiar with mission paint. Um, can you get that at any art store? Is there something different about it than, let's say... Um, I think the are... color is kind of um, brighter or something, but, you know. But, I don't know, Re recently I just stick with mission. <laughs> Too dark. And I'd like to, re to remind our audience members that if they have questions, you're welcome to put them in the chat and I will uh, try and pass them along to she as uh, time permits. Well, I want to talk about the this um, masking boots. Usually, I don't use it. It's still for the for this demo purpose because I feel this um uh, the reason I don't like it is um, you know it gives gives you the very hard edge, which I don't like. Okay. But for this picture, it's kind of uh, because this is very um. The, the, the edge is harsh, so it's okay, but usually I don't like it so much. I just try to leave the white. Okay. But, you know, it's going to be very slow, so. Mm -hmm. And this, it destroys your brushes, right? So this might be a funny question for an art for an artist, but do you have a favorite color? Ooh. <laughs> I don't have a I really don't I never thought about it. <laughs> oh, okay. So are you talking about the color I like to use a lot or the color I really like? Either one. I think that one I really like to use, okay, very, very helpful, and I cannot live without it, is the sienna. Uh, yeah. Raw sienna or burnt sienna? I think it's a burnt sienna. It's a very bright one, right? It's very yes, bright one. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. That's the one I like to use. Okay. It doesn't mean the one I like, okay. <laughs> oh, and also indigo. Indigo is really good, the, this, this, uh, for the dark, right? I don't want yeah. to use, when you don't want to use black, you want to it's get done, we we'll get it very dark, then it's time to use indigo, right? So uh, are you familiar with Payne's Gray? Is indigo similar to Payne's Gray? I think indigo is a tiny little bit bluish in it. That's what I feel. Also purple, also purple is the color I like to use. Oh yeah? I'm talking about, uh, yes, the, okay. yes, that's the purple and also the um, very dark, the very dark, not purple, but kind of like purplish red, whatever the in between <laughs> ah. those colors I really like. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, how can you make it dark without black? <laughs> but I don't like gray. But I don't like to use gray. I don't have gray. Because I feel like the gray, gray actually is, um, is black and white, right? So gray is not a color.
So what color or colors are you using in that stem there? Hmm. It's a sienna mixed with a little bit. Hmm. <laughs> I, I don't even know which color I mixed. <laughs> sure. Yeah, you just reach and you kind of know uh, where it is and what it looks like and it's all yeah. good, right? Yes, that's what I do because that's here is for I clean it here because ah. I need to do a demo, right? Yeah. Usually that's how I my palette looks like. That's okay. the normal, <laughs> normal <laughs> thing, okay? This that's is very great. special just for this demo. So sometimes <laughs> You, don't, you just don't wash your palettes too often. Uh -huh. so you can keep a little bit, you know, clean parts, yeah. but you can use this, you know, these, these dirty colors, right? You always can use it. So it's, yeah. it makes okay. your, you know, mixing job much easier. <laughs> it's harder for those people who like to keep everything neat and neat and separate <laughs> it's that's why it's a hard for me to talk about it i don't know which color i used i really don't <laughs> oh. but that's that's probably um because because my my major was oil painting so that's what we learned you know we don't talk about which color mixed with which color because like what i feel is even I tell you, okay, this is red mixed with um, a little bit of blue. So how about I use one drop of red and uh, three drops of blue? And uh, then it's going to be so different with uh, two drops of blue with uh, yeah, I mean, sure, between one. Sure. So it's, it's hard to talk about it. And also, this is the thing. Um, probably this time I use this color to mix with, you know, uh, for example, I use the blue mixed with some. Um, permanent rows to make this color, the color I'm going to use now. Uh -huh. Okay. So next time for the same painting, maybe I use um, purple. Who knows? Yeah. I mean, this, this actually will get the same results or not exactly the same, right? But very similar. Right. So there's so many ways to get the same color. How big is your water container? Oh, that's huge. Want to see it? Sure. <laughs> oh, wow. It is. Okay. And it's very heavy glass. So you use a big water container because then you can rinse your brush quite well in between, I take it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, then I, now I'm going to use the wet on wet again. So it looks like you have a lot of different greens on your palette. <laughs> um, yes. A whole lot. Let's put everything on it. <laughs> everything I have. The more, the merrier. <laughs> All the same I always keep my water brush in hand just try to finish as more as possible here and then you can see how I did it Well, the artists like to paint details. My <laughs> suggestion is just not to paint very tight because that's, you know, because I like to paint details, but that's why I always remind myself to don't paint really tight. So 
so you paint a lot of details, but you you, you make sure and leave a lot make of sure. loose edges. Right. right. It's hard because you have to, it's, it's about timing, right? So if uh, you make it, you know, you use the water brush too early and then it's not dry enough, then you make mess, right? So if it's too late, I mean, yes, takes too long, then it dried up. So, so but watercolor painting is all about timing. That's, that's the key. We saw from your supplies list that you like the silver ve black velvet brushes. Oh yes, right. That's my favorite brush. I still uh, keep one or two uh, synthetic brush, whatever brands is, because sometimes you know if you uh, if the painting already dried up and then you want to wash it, you have a little bit, um, little bit what uh, the, the the white parts or the yes then you can use your synthetic brush to to wash away, right? Wash the color away. But for this natural hair, it's so hard. So do you do you try to have a focal point in your painting? I think yes. I usually, you know, keep it here, not in the middle, right? You you know, if you know a little bit about the composition, you know, you never mm, put the focal point, vision point here in the in the middle. Always like a little bit, you know, off the middle, off the center. Okay. That's I think for this painting, it's it's here, most likely, and a little bit here. So it happens. So the the way I solve this problem is <laughs> I just use it. This is a uh, uh, the sponge used in the kitchen. Oh, um, I just don't know what happened. <laughs> it's from my pan. So do you have a particular size of paper that you go to time after time or is it quite does it vary a lot between one painting and the next? You're talking about the size? Yeah, the size of the paper. Oh, I usually use the full sheets, like the twenty by twenty by something or twenty by thirty. Oh, the full sheets? Yes. That's what I usually do. Ah, okay. This is just to a part of my painting. I see. Okay. Yes. 
All the colors in there are beautiful. Thank you. When should I stop my painting? I don't remember the time anymore. Oh, um, how much time do I still have? You still have an hour, um, oh. almost an hour, 50, oh, okay. 55 minutes. Then I think I can finish this part. Okay. Thank you. to clean it here. <laughs> it's really fun to see how many different colors you used and how many different details and changes in just a small area. That's why it takes a lot of time. <laughs> Artists like to paint details. It's just, it's so hard for us to do that more. Okay. I'm not going to get something, the dark part for here. Okay, this red one. So same thing, I paint the color first and then use the water brush to soften it. So, do you usually paint the background last? Uh, yes, I don't want to. I don't like to paint the first. Not like a lot of art. I just, I just feel like it's easy to control for me. And I, I don't even paint the background at the same time. I just paint a little by little. I just feel oh. it's easy to control. Like here, I paint a little bit. Uh huh. Yeah. And I'm gonna just do a little bit more. Oh, I see. <laughs> so I really feel like if I paint the whole thing, it will be a mess. I'm not sure it, it happened to me. So you just paint a little bit at a time and just mm -hmm. uh, keep working it out and changing up the color. Right. Do you do um, portraits and landscapes? Yes, I do. If you Google me, you'll find my portraits. <laughs> okay. Landscapes, not so much. Mm. Buildings, architectures sometimes. Okay. Portraits a lot. <laughs> I'll just I spend the 
most of time to think of which color next. So that's what you need to think about it. Which color next? Um, almost, I think I mostly change the color every single brush. Huh. And, uh, and actually this is bad for me because it didn't, you know, the, the color didn't change. So I'm going to just use, they will use my magic, whatever. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is my sweet magic now. Magic color change. Yeah. Okay. That's what I do. Now, when you paint uh, portraits, um, do you paint um, commissions? Do you paint people you know? Do you paint uh, strangers? Uh, what's your preferred way of going about portraits? My portraits is kind of, um, if you Google me, I cannot say, it's kind of surrealistic a little bit. Uh -huh. So I paint nudes sometimes. And uh, it's, um, it's, um, it's kind of from my imagination a little bit. So you can Google me now. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of different, so different. It's still very detailed though. I like details, but you know, just a little bit, um, I put more creativity in it. Not like my um, still life or if this is um, more silly, it's technic thing, right? Technical thing. Mm -hmm. But still you have to know about the composition, you know, color balance. But when I paint portraits, almost you need to think more of your, you know, um, your own. I'm just looking at how beautiful your the leaves are that you've painted and how much you've changed up the color of the, the leaves going from the yellow to the green and um, making some spots on the leaves. And it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Almost done. Okay, this part. And I'm going to paint a little bit backgrounds. You can see how I do it. Okay. But not the, not, not a lot of the way a lot of artists do. I just paint a little bit at a time. That would be awesome. <laughs> We're looking forward to seeing how you do the background. I'll just do it here first. You still think about it, the color change. Here because just uh, I use the masking boot, so it's easier. You can just. But typically, you wouldn't use the masking fluid. You no, would just I take the time to go around it. it. Yes, I just paint around it. It's a little bit, a little bit harder, but it just you know more control. Yeah. One of our members would like to know if there is a particular watercolor artist that you admire. Oh boy. Oh, I'm Dean Mitchell, really, yes. Dean Mitchell is my favorite all time. <laughs> it's really, I, I cannot do that, that's why. Just uh, really the color, the color change, I am just, uh, the first time I saw it, I was like, wow. <laughs> so, yes. What size brush are you using there for the back? This one is, uh, oh boy, the size is gone. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think it's eight. Okay. I think it's eight.
And what kind of uh, masking fluid do you use? Hmm. I think it's here, but I don't remember. Oh, oh. <laughs> I don't remember which brands now. I think they're all they're similar, similar thing. Because I didn't buy it. It's a uh... okay here. Yes. Uh, can you see the Frenchy? Yeah. Okay. This is it. Oh, talk about the masking food. You can add a little bit of water before you use, just a little bit. Uh -huh. It's easy to, right, to paint on, and then it's not going to hurt your brush so much. Okay. That's what I do. But if you add too much, <laughs> then you will end up with a color leaking, okay? It happened to me, too. Oh. Mm -hmm. If you put too much water in, you, you mean? You, you put too much water in. Okay. And I I feel like um, almost every one I used will give you a little bit yellow. It's just tiny bit, mm. but it will still give you a little bit yellow. That's another reason I don't like to use it. Oh, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Well, especially if you use a hot press. Oh, sorry. Yes, hot press. Cold press, not so much. This is too big. So oh, I think oh. we're kind of curious as to that big area of the background. Um, oh, here? Upper okay. left. Um, you want what, me? Okay, I can yeah, do it. Yeah. yeah, what are you going to do with that? Um, I think I'll just wet the paper a little bit first. For here. Just use the color you used here for the for the plants. Okay. So you just like my soft uh mm -hmm. wet on wet background. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. But try to get the color you use here to make the color composition right to match. Oops. Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> I have another one. I have a very big brush. So one of our uh, members says she thinks she won a prize with the original painting in a competition. Is that, do you remember, is that accurate? Oh, yes, this one, right? Yes. <laughs> yes, I think this one won few of them. <laughs> yes, one is the National Watercolor Society. Okay. Okay, so now for the edge. I have to be very careful. I'm just going to use a small, smaller brush to get the edge. Because oh. it's uh, already wet, so I'm just going to paint a long edge. Oh, I see. So you didn't wet it first all the way up to the edge. I did a little bit. It's, it's wet. It's a, okay. It's the whole, not whole paper, but the whole section is wet. We've got a comment here um, 
from Mary Frances. You paint so close to the edge. How do you frame it? <laughs> uh, I just frame a little bit because I never thought about a frame it. <laughs> I never thought about to frame this one. Just uh, the easy to, you know, to, to, to it's like, a, it's almost like a framing um, concept, right? It's because it's very neat. <laughs> I'm just going to paint a little bit here. Okay. Huh. Oops. Not right. <laughs> and you're using quite a bit of water in the paint that you're putting down in mm -hmm. addition to the water you laid down first. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. I think the um, hot press, it's, it's hard to make the paint even even it's so the paper is so wet it sometimes still have problems so i have to be very careful the cold cold press not so much i think it's easier if you want to paint this when you know very wet background or something that's what i feel do you paint with your with the surface tilted or is it flat on the Desk I think it's a little bit tilted. A little bit tilted, okay. Mm -hmm. But for background, it's bad. I'm sorry, for background, it's what? So, I make it flat. Oh, flat for the background. Yeah, because I don't want it, you know, drip, the, the, the color drip, right? Oh, I see. So... Uh, typically, you always paint to the edge of the paper. Not really. I just um, I do. I have a <laughs> no. I don't. I usually don't paint the edge of the paper. I use. I leave white edge. Do you have this part? When it's towards the edge, it's um, hard to control. Be very careful. So all your brushes seem to um, hold a really nice point. Do you have to replace your brushes very often? Uh, not very often, but often, yes. <laughs> so I just gave away my brushes. <laughs> I <laughs> give my students ah. after a while when the number is gone see this one's almost uh, this one's almost uh, time to go away because the number is gone <laughs> huh. <laughs> almost at the time the number is gone I usually just give away interesting
So I, I saw lots of artists like, you know, um, mask everything, right? First, and then do the background. That's what I usually see. But this way you probably get perfect um, edge, but I, that's what not I like. I, my, I like my edge to be loose not very tight. And then you, you just use brush, uh, use the very harsh, hard brush to, to, you know, to soften it, whatever you do. And that's what I, I see, but it's just so hard to, to um, manage it. Right? So your brushes, are they natural bristle then? Mm-hmm. Barbara would like to know, do you have to worry about the background bleeding into the detailed part? A little bit. Yeah, but I don't worry about it. I like it. That's oh. what I like. Okay. A little bit doesn't hurt. If it's a lot, then it's a mess, right? Right. Um, it's, it's all about, it's all about the, um, you know, um, it's not a, not to, it's still about the timing. If you do it too fast, then it will, of course, it will bleed in. But if you don't, I mean, you wait until completely dry, then it doesn't give you the bleeding at all. And it's, uh, I don't like it either. So. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So do you tend, when you're doing a big painting, do you tend to work one section of it, the the detail and the background before you move on to a, Not really. Page? I I like to paint something everywhere because okay. it's easy to control, easy to get the sense of color. Okay. But this one is for the demo. I don't think I can finish this one. So I'm just paint one session. Sure. Because when you paint the everything a little bit, then you really get the tone, right, of this uh, this uh, painting. Yes. So, do you do a lot of pre-planning when you sit down uh, to do a painting? Yes, I do. But every time, I mean, almost every time, that the result is different <laughs> than I planned. I mean, yes, it's so different in the, between the one I planned in my head and the, the, the final result. Oh, is that right? Uh-huh. Well, it's always, it's... that's why I like watercolor so much. Sometimes, of course, it's a, it's a bad accident. It, sometimes it's good, but most likely it's good. <laughs> so, okay. So sometimes it surprises you in, in a good way. Yes. Sometimes it's a good surprise. Sometimes, of course, bad surprise. And I just threw it away. Everyone okay. threw it away. <laughs> Paintings. We have about a half an hour left. All right. I think I'll just paint uh, uh, in this one, maybe. <laughs> yep. Finish it here. So I don't worry about this kind of thing bleeding so much. If it's not everywhere, it looks very watercolor. Mm -hmm. It's always a let me say sweet point, right? It's not um, too much overdue and there's sometimes not enough, right? But so if there's something in between, then that, that's the perfect time. Mm. That's why you can never get the same watercolor. 
paints a second time, it will never be the same. Sure. So uh, Pat is wondering how you decided to mask the particular shapes that you did in this painting. Oh, it's just the pure white. So oh, okay. like I think we still have, uh, I'm going to paint uh, 10 more minutes and go through another one. Okay. Which one, which part do you want me to paint? <laughs> you can tell me. I'm not going to finish everything, but. Well. Maybe a little bit, but how about that? Yeah, that'd be good. For the dark. I'll just paint the light color first, which is uh, be a little bit yellow. And move to. And change wow, to. Look at that. A little bit blue. So when you plan your painting, do you intentionally divide your background with some elements such as leaves, twigs, et cetera, so that you can paint it part by part or no? Yes. Yes. That's what I did here, right? For here. See? Yeah. Then you yeah. don't. Yes. Or, or there's another way to do it if you don't have anything to separate it. Okay. What I do, I can uh, give you some tips. So, for example, if you you ha you have to stop here, right? You cannot. Right. You don't want to paint down anymore because you don't anyway. Uh, you, you you just don't want to paint down. That's what I do. Just uh, you know, you paint the here and then use water, make it so softly turned to color with uh, to non color right? To, to okay. color to white. Use just use water, and next time you can just uh, connect the your next layer from the parts it's almost done to the parts still white that's what i with do with water mm -hmm. with water but usually i do like divide the with the leaves like this part is the perfect spot to stop so i stopped here Okay, so I'm gonna do you them. happen to have the original big painting on no, there? It's no. in a, an exhibition. Oh, okay. Well, somebody says you have a picture of it on your website. Is that true? Uh, yes, this is the, on the website because I think we would like to see it. But uh, or, that or be... if you go to my website or you go to Facebook, Instagram, whatever, okay, yeah, it's there. So I paint the the um, right uh, background for the for the bark, and then I'm going to put some dog. It's the, the the hard part for this bark is just yes, you cannot use uh, you cannot use black, right? But it's it's so easy to say, oh no black, but you know sometimes you put a lot of color in it. Mix the so well and then it turned black, <laughs> turn a gray, like black. Uh -huh. So don't mix too well for the dark. Okay. I use a lot of indigo for this one. It's still very wet, so. Okay, I'm gonna change to the one I already finished. Okay. I don't really finished, but. Okay, this is the one I did this morning. So basically same 
technique, just finish the, the, the whole painting. And also, not, not really finished, but almost. Can you see? Oh, I see. So, okay, here. Okay. So the only thing I didn't do is the, um, the spots I used the, the masking. So here, I just use the, what do you call this thing? Eraser, whatever, uh -huh. with the scrape tip. So it's just, you can see the white parts. Exactly okay, so you've thing, taken right? off all the masking. Mm -hmm. Yes, I took everything off and then that's it. And, and then, then now, once you take off the masking, do you do anything else to the areas that were masked or no? Not yet, so I'm gonna do it now. Oh, I see, gotcha, okay. So I'm going to paint a little bit detail for the white parts. So I'd like to remind everybody that there will be no meeting in December. We typically don't meet in December and we will be picking up with our next meeting in January. And that will be over Zoom as well. So how many years have you been doing watercolor? Probably 10, 10 years. Okay. And you do it almost every day? Oh, uh, not almost every day, just every day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Some, uh, some days if I travel, right? And at least four hours a day. And I wish I can have more time wow. to paint. All right, so here. Okay, that's a, yes, that's another uh, thing I want to mention is the, after the masking, after you take off the masking foods, try to always do something, <laughs> do something on it with it, because it's sometimes it's, okay, so this is the, the knife I have. Sometimes, you know, it's too big, the, the masking foods, of course, you use the brush, whatever you use, it will end up too big or sometimes it's not enough it's gone whatever so that's the time you really need to use your um yes get more details or you know soften the edge so here somehow the color so you're just scraping some of the color off with an exacto right. knife mm -hmm. very sharp right very sharp it has to be really sharp but just remember, if you use the knife, then uh, you cannot paint it on anymore. So yeah. it needs to be really dry. I, I, I lost that, this one. Even for the little details, I still want to soften the edge a little bit. Some some places. Hmm. Well, I was just noticing your bark there on that bigger limb, on the one that's all dry, and it looks so realistic to me. It's like yeah. I want to reach out and touch it. 
I just uh, mm, yes, put another layer of texture. Ah. Use the very dry brush. Oh, I see. Right here. Just want to soften the edge a little bit. So are you making up some of these details or were you referring to a, a pretty detailed reference photo? Uh, it's a very detailed photo. Well, I, I just feel like gave a little bit of detail, so. And also I want to um, darken some uh, white spots like this one. It's almost, uh, I have five minutes, right? <laughs> Or do I still have five minutes? Sorry. Yes. Okay. Uh, actually, you got 15 minutes, so. Oh, okay. That's good. It's all good. So th these white spots, too bright, so I'm going to make it dark. Okay, so there's a, ch a question in the chat here. Any tips on the bokeh effect in background? I'm not familiar with that word, B-O-K-E. Oh, it's just, uh, it's from a, it's from my camera, that's it. But... Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, it's from my camera and I, I love it because uh, it's actually it's just something in the background, right? It just, uh, it's, it will help your composition. Uh -huh. I don't use every one, okay? I just pick the one I want, especially just for the composition purpose. So it really helped me. Huh. Sometimes, you know, the, the background is too simple, nothing's there. But if you have this, uh, um, whatever you call it, I forgot the word, and then it will be very interesting, enrich the background. Oh. <laughs> but I don't use every single one. This one is um, the white I left is too big, so I'm gonna just make it small. Try to fix the detail. So Candy would like to know if you could show us how you did the bouquet circles in the background, or does it need to be done when it's still damp? The background, what are you talking about? Which one? This one? I masked it, remember? This is the, this is the one, right? This is the masking. Oh, I see. Yeah. Right? 
So I masked it, and then when it dried, uh, yes, I took it off. And then um, these two, right? One, two, three. I mastered the three of them. So oh, I see. Took them off, and then, but here I fixed a little bit, make it kind of loose, right? Softening. It was like too tight. It was like very harsh edge. So I just softened it. So in, in your original, there mm -hmm. were a lot of big, uh, of those big um, okay. circles in the back. Yeah. In the yes, background. but for this one, I didn't do it because I... It but in the original, <laughs> did you mask them? No, I didn't mask them at all. I didn't use any masking tools for my original painting. But it doesn't mean you cannot use it. Um, you can. It just takes longer, that's it. See, this, this is the bad thing about, you know, the disadvantage of this masking boot. See, it's always, it's always get, gives me bigger space than I need. So I have to fix oh. it. But if you uh -huh. don't use it, then you don't have this problem. Right, right. And it always gives you harsh, very harsh edge, right? So that's what I don't like, so... So um, Candy w wants to know if, since you didn't use masking fluid to get that effect in the original, mm -hmm. um, did you paint around the lighter circles or did you scrub out or how did- I just paint along the circles. But sometimes, no, I don't, I didn't use knife. I, I think I used a sponge oh. if I really make mis made a mistake. Uh -huh. <laughs> Okay. But try to not to make mistakes. That's it. I mean, to be a watercolor artist who loves to paint details, that's you have to learn not to make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Well, things happen. Every uh, I almost make mistakes every painting. Sometimes it's just uh, really unforgivable then give up. But most of the time, I can fix it. Oh. Still, I'm still trying to fix the problem. The masking tape, leftover mess. Oh, I see. <laughs> right. It's not that bad. The berries aren't supposed to have snow on them. <laughs> it's actually the lighting. This in the, I think it's in the morning lighting. Yeah, okay. It's beautiful. So, mm. so yes, try to be a very good photographer first. <laughs> so the the lighting details and such were looked that way in your photograph that you took. 
yes, very similar. But um, yes, I think I just got rid of this bookcase. I don't uh-huh. need, and also the color, some color, a little bit different. I use Photoshop to to change the color I want first, usually. Huh. So Photoshop is another tool I use. Almost every picture. here and okay i'll spend another five minutes to just fix a little bit here because it's too bright in my big paintings it they are bright but for this painting because i need to think about integrity right so i'm gonna make a little bit darker everything for the corners So did you teach yourself Photoshop or did you learn that in a class or what? I learned it from school. Oh, I see. Most of them I still learn by myself. (laughs) Because it changes every every few years, right? It has uh, something new. But I studied photography, so it was really a good experience. It really helped. Sure. I really thought I would be a photographer <laughs> at that time. So yes, you. If you ask me, uh, how many watercolor artists in France do you play? I I was uh, uh, I had I knew nothing at that time, but really uh, influenced by lots of photographers. Okay, <laughs> and then sense. I yes, and then I start to learn watercolor. Okay, and then I start to check about okay, uh, yes, a lot of yes, watercolor society, blah blah blah, and then start to get familiar with this watercolor world. But at that time, I think I already had my opinion on a lot of, you know, technique, whatever things. Right? I think I'm, uh, I think I'm done. <laughs> All right. Oh. One more thing. <laughs> Just one more. Okay. Any questions? <laughs> so, uh, uh, um, Candy is recommending that um, people look at your painting called Silver Moss. Oh, yeah, that one. I think I used a little bit masking for, for that one, <laughs> just tiny bit. That was the that's probably the first one I paint the moss. Wow. <laughs> and Pat would like to know, how do you know when you're done? I can paint it forever, but it's time to get it done. And then it's done. Time is, time is over. <laughs> 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 but I think it's a uh, it look. It looks decent, so okay. <laughs> well, I have comments in the chat. Very beautiful, stunning, astounding, so beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> Very beautiful. So uh, people are loving it. Fantastic. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, people are saying they love your work, and wow, it's beautiful. So thank you so much for coming and showing us how you do this tonight. It's it's fascinating to me that I've watched so many different demos and yet everybody kind of does it differently. 
Yes. And um, so we picked up some new and interesting techniques from you tonight. And I really appreciate that. Oh, I just want to mention one more thing. See, it's dried, right? That's what I did. First of all, this is the first layer. Okay. Right. And then I use this very dry brush to try to get the texture. That's it. Ah, I yeah. see. Yeah, that's it. Good point. Good pointer. Thank you, she. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> we'll have to go to your website and look at more of your beautiful. Oh, yeah, community. please. And the Facebook, Instagram. Thank you. I'm Definitely. everywhere. <laughs> Definitely. Thank you so Thank you. much. Well, uh, thank you for this beautiful painting and uh, the reds and greens kind of get me thinking Christmas and I uh, just want to wish everybody a happy holiday and uh, we will see you in the coming year. Night. Bye. Good thank night, you. all. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Michelle. Thanks for coming. Thank you, She. And thanks, thank Pat. You. Thank you for help me setting up. <laughs> yeah, it was a great demo. Super. You bet. Good job. Good job.